I'll okay. be quiet. <laughs> thanks. No, thanks, Ivan. Uh, yeah, it is 2.05, and you know what? I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to trust everybody uh, to be responsible with, uh, with muting for this one, uh, unless it gets out of hand, then I'll have to mute all. <laughs> but uh, I, I do want to quickly go through uh, the uh, initiative updates that we go through through every week um, and get into roll call next, because uh, we got a lot of great folks on the call. want to hear from everyone. Um, if we do have time, I uh, want to share an update from uh, Sasha, Reed, and I were out in London. Uh, had some great conversations uh, around BIM level two standards and how PDS play into that and uh, have a presentation that we can share if there's time uh, and want to make sure we share that meeting feedback. But um, let me first go through uh, the overview of the coalition. So again, since 2013, uh, coalition has really been focused on maximizing the digital efficiency of handoffs between design and construction uh, in this industry. And, and as we're learning now, even extending into uh, inspections, authority, authorities, and, and other sides. But uh, at any rate, come in, bringing AEC together. And uh, uh, there, if you really want to read more, there's actually a LinkedIn uh, article here with, that we uh, wrote. And so let me just copy this link, and I'll put it in the chat box uh, in case anyone wants to check that out. All right. um, so between now and Autodesk University, we are putting together what will be the more formal governance of the organization and really trying to focus on being, uh, again, a grassroots coalition of industry folks. And so you can see within the membership here that we're really focused on architecture, engineering, uh, CM, trade contractors, project owners, and, and probably even on some of the, uh, the government side as well, we'll be looking for membership of those are the true practitioners. Uh, and gathering uh, those folks together. We're also gonna have partnerships between you know, those software providers, Autodesk, Bluebeam, and a ton of other apps. You know, they're out there trying to really penetrate this marketplace uh, that want access to the practitioners and really the advice and the feedback that we give that's so valuable. Um, and there's other, of course, service providers and hardware providers that are really you know, in this with us and, and still sort of working out what that relationship is gonna be uh, within the partnership. And then of course there's our, our partnership organizations like the BIM Forum uh, and other standards organizations that we really want to work closely with, uh, help influence standards uh, and, and grow them through a lot of these guidelines like the construction PDF guidelines. Um, so with that, uh, Jim, do you want to uh, give a quick, quick update on initiative number one? Absolutely. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Um, the initiative update is, uh, the time is now. So today, in theory, is the last day that the version one will be on the studio session. Uh, because we have a lot of new callers and a few people, I think we'll let it run through the weekend. And on Monday, I will be closing the studio session for comments on version uh, 2.0. And then uh, I'll be giving myself about a week or so to process that information. So the following call, uh, next week, Friday, I think we'll be heavily focused on those updates and findings so everybody can have a chat about the way we're headed with the new guidelines and see all of the comments that are up to date or that have been added and uh, the suggestions that have been made. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jim. And uh, yeah, again, yep. post, post that link in there and uh, please do put those comments in and want to make sure we uh, get, get a bunch packed into version 2.0. Uh, moving on to initial number two, I, unless he's called in. Lon, Lonnie, are you on the phone? Uh, no, Lonnie. Okay. Uh, so real quick update uh, for Lonnie's. Again, really trying to grow the engagement through all of our you know, social channels and you know, create influence uh, and awareness. Uh, it was really interesting and awesome uh, seeing how much interest there was uh, in Europe this week. Uh, with, with learning more about the PDF coalition and you know, what we stand for as far as the industry voice, um, really pragmatic uh, standards and guidelines. So again, any new ideas of things that maybe we're not thinking of, uh, please do fill out this smart sheet form. I'll uh, copy this as well and put that into the chat box. Uh, and uh, as well, you know, if you're not already uh, part of the LinkedIn group, that's a great way to uh, stay connected. Uh, as well as our press page and the Twitter handle. So uh, Chris Langiza is uh, actually, uh, he, he told me he wouldn't be making the call because uh, he was cleaning up his house after Hurricane Matthew. So I guess he, he has an excuse and a pass this week. 
Um, but glad to know that his house uh, looks like everything's okay. He was for, a little bit further south in Florida. Um, but uh, a, a quick update that I can give on the uh, sort of common data dictionary efforts. So a big effort is going to be how do we talk with COSA, uh, the Construction uh, Open Standards uh, Association. And they have uh, a former AGC XML that actually James Benham with JB Knowledge uh, ha has really spearheaded a lot. And uh, after uh, having our conversation last week on the uh, podcast, uh, it sounds like there's a lot of interest in partnership and really forming some sort of an alliance uh, between the two because there's just so much common overlap and really defining where is the, uh, the, the best data-driven and naming conventions for sharing RFIs, submittal, things like that. I think the challenge is going to be how do we make it flexible enough that adapts to different projects, but you know, structured enough that uh, those on the technology side that are building integrations can uh, use it effectively. And I think uh, the ISO standards for both you know, PDF and IFC are really going to be critical for that and uh, really interested to see how we as, as, a, as an industry organization can influence that. Um, but with that, uh, let's go back up to roll call. And uh, I did see that Carol Hagen uh, is on the line. Uh, thank you so much, Carol. Uh, do you want to Hi. introduce yourself? Thought I thought I'd jump in and say hello. Um, I'm in Arizona, hand hand out a lot of blue bean tips. Hope to hope to contribute, and uh, certainly will help out with the social media side as well. Awesome. Uh, since it is your first call, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? I am the owner of Hagen Business Systems. We provide software to the construction industry, Bluebeam one being one of those flagship items. Uh, it's been a great year for Bluebeam sales, so thank you all, <laughs> and keep up the good work. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> great. All right, thanks, Carol. Uh, Ivan? Oh. All right. Uh, Brock, actually, uh, why don't you, this is your first call, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. Brock Howard with uh, Dorofus, um, architect by, uh, by trade. I practiced for about almost 10 years, uh, switched to the software side, uh, almost a year ago to the day, and uh, so real interested in trying to integrate technology and integrate workflows. So um, I think we've known each other, Nathan, for uh, probably twice that long, maybe a little bit longer. Um, also heavily involved in the AC hackathon movement. So if you happen to be in San Francisco uh, in the near future, we should uh, see if we can have some uh, workflows related to uh, uh, the coalition efforts as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and uh, no, I, Brock and I, I think, probably for, first met at a uh, BIM Forum event, and I was really intrigued with uh, what he was doing with DeRofus at HOK. And, uh, you know, it's, I know it feels like a selfish plug, but only because Dorofus is so interesting and not that well known in the U.S. Can, can you talk a little bit about sort of where, uh, maybe how you use it at HOK and where, where it fits uh, in the design and construction phase? Yeah, Dorofus kind of fits in that area where uh, the data management is important. So the thing that we've been talking about for probably 10 years in, in the big picture of how we're managing models and information, but for those of you that have been using Revit as long as uh, many of us, uh, you understand that Revit's really not the best database for storing all of your project data related to the informational projects. So we, we kind of fit in that niche area that uh, unless you've already kind of gone beyond and you're an advanced BIM user, you really aren't even interested in us as a product. So we're really tailoring the people that want to go to that next level of data uh, integration, communication, tracking. Uh, one of our main uh, resources is room data sheets. Uh, so if you're trying to track information about a room. It's also integrated to when you're trying to track equipment. So whether that's tables, chains, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, uh, think of it as in your model, it, it's very, very simple. In your drawings, it's for the purposes of communication, but then all the other data that you might want to track uh, related to the specifications, cut sheets, that kind of stuff. We even have some clients experimenting using Dorofus uh, as their um, submittal tool because they're actually trying to say, all the data is here, it's a P3 project, I'm not going to send you a submittal, just go into Dorofus and sign off on it all digitally. So 
Uh, with some municipalities, you can do that. With some government agencies, you definitely cannot. So uh, from a data and migration standpoint, our biggest clients, the ones who use Dorofa to the highest end, are actually using it as an asset management tool. So uh, the Oslo Airport is a good example that our, our company is based out of Oslo. The Oslo Airport, at the end of construction, moves all their assets into uh, Dorofus, and now every, every new project is actually using the same asset database. So you're not trying to figure out what's the latest light fixture or what's the latest plumbing fixture. They already have all their standards in place. So some of our big clients are, are healthcare, airports, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we also have some clients that are using it for small renovation projects. So it's very uh, scalable. If you want to learn more, just hit me up. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Dorofus. So if you have any questions, just reach out. That's really interesting, Brad. I actually, because I, I go back to the Sutter Castro Valley days when uh, Herrick Steele and their detailer had set up the first in-model review for structural engineers to not have to wait until they, and part of this presentation from London actually talks about that breakdown and how much better it is to, to bring it in up front. And uh, it's interesting, I didn't realize that that was now you know, possible in some of these revenue workflows, I guess, through, through, through Dorofa. So very, very cool, very cool. Um, Moving along, uh, Roberto. Oh, sorry. Oh, Nathan, sorry, but I, I had my microphone muted. I was talking, but you can hear me. It's uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I apologize, but I have a separate uh, way to mute my microphone, and I didn't realize that was on. Oh, no uh, so, Yeah, so uh, I actually started with Autodesk about uh, seven months ago, six, seven months ago. And I, my background, I um, worked with uh, Balfour Media Construction for about nine years, leading the uh, Southeast region effort for virtual design construction. I've uh, been really engaged on managing digital documents, uh, how uh, information uh, flows throughout the construction life cycle. So I have experience working with the uh, design firms on setting up uh, all their uh, PDF exports. So I've gone through all the hiccups uh, that you hear. That's why I know about that, that the, the, the grid on layout and uh, other features that we use to coordinate between different trades so we can do some of, some of the overlays. And, uh, the design side. And, and Sorry, and, 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 and one, one of the biggest uh, issues that we had is when trying to overlay and coordinate uh, the design, uh, the architect, the engineers, and uh, our, uh, uh, the, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and, and overlay them together is that they didn't use same uh, coordinates, same references, same scale. So it, it, it was a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Awesome. Thanks, Ivan. So yeah, and because there's a lot of stuff you talked about last time. So I, I just pasted sure. the link for yours, uh, for your uh, presentation from last week. And uh, if it's okay, I want to make sure we, we get through to everybody else. Not a problem. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, moving on, uh, Roberto. Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing. Happy Friday. <clears throat> My name is Roberto Garcia. I am currently a trainer here at Keller Pacific. We provide um, project solutions, uh, software solutions, and support solutions for everyone here in the AEC uh, industry. In the Southern California uh, region, we have offices here in San Diego and in LA. Um, I provide most of the um, training for Autodesk products and Bluebeam products. I've been in the electrical engineering industry for about the last uh, 16 to 18 years, the last couple of years working with um, contractors on the prefab side and, and getting a feel for the whole um, project cycle. So I've been using AutoCAD since uh, release 12. It was in DOS format, so kind of dating myself there, dating myself there for all of you guys that know how long ago that was. Um, and just recently started using Revit a couple years ago, um, getting into the whole BIM movement. So here as a, as a trainer at, at Keller, uh, I provide a lot of the training for um, local contractors for Bluebeam and Revit and, and AutoCAD. So I kind of like to to convey that message and be the evangelist to, to kind of set some of those standards so that they can all kind of, you know, get everybody on the same page, on the same level, just so that um, a lot of this information becomes seamless as far as communicating it. So, so that's what I'm here for, just try to provide as much, uh, uh, be a conduit, I guess, to uh, all the other users here, and, and hopefully we can um, <clears throat> we can establish some of these standards and, and alleviate some of these pains. Absolutely. Thank you. As a fellow, fellow service provider, I agree with you. Um, I, Jim, a quick, quick, uh, real quick. Well, let's go through you and, uh, but let's keep going. But, uh, cool. Uh, Lend Lease Construction, uh, based in LA. 
um, offices kind of throughout the United States. Um, a quality operations manager um, with Lendlease here, so working on a couple projects that we have um, next to the Staples Center and a couple other areas. Um, definitely looking forward to spearheading this uh, the coalition and getting these guidelines to help the day to day um, day to day process. Awesome, thanks, Jim. Terry Ann. <coughs> Okay, I'm unmuted, right? Yes, you're good. Okay, hey, um, Nathan, I'm just, my name is Terri Ann. I work for Bluebeam. Um, I've been with Bluebeam for about seven months, and before that, I worked for Turner. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit more business. I, if, if anybody wants to be added to the website, so Nathan, if you can just pull up the Construction mm -hmm. PDF Coalition website on the members page. So I manage the, the website for the coalition, and I would be more than happy to add your name um, to the site. You'll see we have the design division. Uh, the construction division, and then down at the bottom, the technology partners. So if you can just click on maybe uh, Lonnie or Nathan Woods there, Nathan, and that way you can, people can just tell me what they can see what they need to include. If you can just give me your name, uh, your position, your company, your email address, and then why you wanted to be part of the coalition. I think the more people we have on there, the better. It'd be nice to have your um, your story on there and why you wanted to be part of this and you can email that to me um, Nathan will send out probably the meeting minutes for that and my email address on where to get that But I'm just Tino Hilly at bluebeam.com Awesome. Thank you so much Terry. Ann. Thank and you. Thanks everyone mm -hmm. um, anyway, And they should just email you directly yeah, yeah. Just email okay. me directly so Nathan doesn't have to deal with a bunch of extra emails. Awesome. <laughs> or you can email, even you can email um, the CP Coalition at Outlook.com. That one as well. I check that one as well. Awesome. Thank you, So, Jenny. yeah, please. We'd like to get as many people. If you're on these calls, you should be recognized virtually that you're a part of this. And you, you should be able to just type, type your email address in the, uh, in the chat box for everyone, and then they can just click on it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Awesome. Moving on, Frank Moore, thank you for being on. You want to, want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, this is Frank Moore. I'm with Autodesk. I've been there a very long time. Um, uh, my team at Autodesk does some business development. Uh, historically, uh, we were formed actually as a reaction to the GSA BIM program, so uh, I was directly involved in managing expectations around what you can and can't do with that GSA BIM program. We, I'm, our team also is a liaison to Building Smart, the various chapters across the world. Um, Ivan, who you know, is on my team, we, and he's uh, helping us get a lot more literate around uh, the, the real world of construction workflows. And I want to welcome Brock from DROFUS. Brock, say hello to Ralph for me. I've got a long health relationship with Ralph, and I think to oversimplify what DROFUS does, they manage the I and BIM outside of uh, the, the Revit modeling, uh, any BIM modeling tool, and manage it across a multi-user environment, which is very, very important for hospitals and things like that. So they really do a great job. I would think Nathan, for the U.S., it might be too sophisticated for those of us in the U.S. where, where they're very data-centric in Europe, they get it. But I think uh, if people see what that does, you know, managing the I and BIM across the life cycle for something like a hospital, um, very, very well, powerful tool. That, that doesn't mean there aren't people from places that do that that want to come here and, and help us do that. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, uh, but actually, can, if you're allowed to, I guess, can you give us a quick update of what you were uh, doing with Building Smart recently this week, just, uh, just so we know? Yeah, we just, uh, the Building Smart has a strategic advisory council uh, made up of uh, vendors, uh, you know, BIM vendors and some key uh, counselors. I can send the link to the strategic advisory council. I figure out this chat window, I can send you the link to what yeah, the strategic advisory council after you, yeah, explain it, we can type it in later. Yeah, okay, so what I'll do, but basically it's just a... Um, uh, does he know AutoCAD? I know he knows Revit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. they, oh, yeah, I'll actually know... Um, yeah, I, I actually, I will say that I, 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 I'm not as hands on I used to be, but I did model 1800 F Street and Revit myself, but I had lots of help, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I've also done a lot of work around AutoCAD, the sheet set manager, so I've got a lot of experience with standards, but with, with the Building Smart um, Strategic uh, Advisory Council, is just a, a group that are dedicated to um, a little more business focus for Building Smart and helping uh, uh, articulate um, what Building Smart can and can't do for people uh, around the ISC standards. And so um, what's nice about what's happened lately is a lot of very good practitioners like Arup, HOK has always been involved, uh, some construction companies, Skanska, uh, Hoktif, you know, uh, Vicom Division, uh, others, uh, Kojima, Japanese. So there's a lot more, um, uh, I would say, uh, 
practitioners, especially construction companies, joining the table in terms of the strategic direction of building smart because uh, it's been, uh, those of you that are into a meeting, sometimes they can get very, you know, you, this is a very good meeting compared to building smart. Some of the building smart meetings can get very technical real fast. And I think um, the, the idea is to sort of grow it and focus on the, the data exchanges that make the most business sense. And so I think that's what, what's going on with the strategic advisory council, just trying to move the ball forward in a kind of responsible way and focus on some of the business issues uh, awesome. that should be focused on, you know, and managing expectations. You know, there's still people that believe you should round trip IFC files, which is not supported, things like that. So, but I'll drag in a link to um, that council. And then of course, building smarts always looking for more people to join. Um, and technically, um, the BIM Forum in the United States is the new home for the Building Smart North America. And I'll be um, in attendance uh, along with Ivan, some other members of the team uh, in Atlanta, I guess, in less than two weeks, right? A week from Monday, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Um, let's, uh, let's move along. So uh, Lon, Lon Smith, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Lon Smith. I'm with uh, Bernard's. Uh, fairly good sized general contract construction management firm in Southern California based out of San Fernando, mainly. I'm um, a systems and integrations manager with them. Uh, just recently added to that team. I've uh, been in the field about eight, nine years before that. Um, pretty much responsible for uh, developing policies, procedures of new software systems, as well as um, uh, helping with the push to take uh, digital documents a lot more out in the field and out of the office. So it's a, uh, it's a big project, but I, I enjoy it. Awesome. Well, good. Ho hopefully uh, you can learn and, and share with us. Um, thanks so much for being online. Uh, Michael, I know you've been on a few times. You want to really just quickly uh, introduce yourself? Uh, all right, let's, oh, let's go on to uh, Niran. Uh, I know you've been on as well before, Niran, but just a uh, real quick introduction. Two for two. Oh, did I unmute? Hey, Nathan, sorry, I was on mute. This is Michael. I was on mute. Okay, go ahead, Michael. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my name is Michael with Ipermi Hub. Um, we've been uh, engaged with the uh, CPC for, for uh, the last month or two, uh, trying to see how we can engage uh, government jurisdictions and, um, and kind of integrate um, whatever the, the CPC does with um, basically government, right? So to be able to do um, electronic plan submittals and Eventually, 3D stuff, but you know, let's start with 3D first. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Uh, Nirad, are you unmuted now? <clears throat> there we go. Yes. Hi, everybody. This is Niran. Uh, I'm with On Target, and All Target is a BIM collaboration software that integrates um, Forge API right now, and then we also have a API with Procore recently. Uh, and then we also integrate with Microsoft Project and Primavera. Uh, what we basically do is bring all these pieces of fragmented pieces of softwares together and enable like inter exchange of data in between each other. Uh, we have a mobile application that you can use on the field for updating the job progress. And when you're pro uh, updating job progress, you can visualize that on the model as well and compare the actual versus the planned. Uh, so basically, it's a BIM and scheduling combined together. Awesome. Thanks, Naran. Uh, Ruben, are you there? Yeah, you guys hear me okay? Absolutely. Nice. You want to yourself? Ruben Stone. I'm with TY Lynn International. We're a uh, uh, design firm specializing in civil structural design. Uh, my portion is in the Big Bridge line of business unit on alternative delivery, that is design build projects. And typically, that's what I'm called as a delivery manager. I make sure that all of my sub consultants are on the same page from a standards and workflows standpoint so that we can de deliver a product that looks and feels the same despite being deformed by 15 different independent agencies. Uh, really big into alternative de design, as I said, and uh, most of our projects are not what would you call it, geocentric. Uh, my staff is in uh, various time zones between anywhere in the United States, North America, to the Middle East. So I've got a lot of challenges when it comes to digital delivery, and I was, uh, I'm investigating better things 
uh, and better processes and more uh, stringent standards to foist on my victims. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, I'm curious, what, what percentage would you guess of uh, bridge and road projects are some sort of a design build alternative delivery contract? Well, it depends on the region and the states. There's yeah. always an alternative delivery project available to uh, people just because of the accelerated construction schedule involved in that metric. But it's uh, it's really agency by agency. It's uh, there's I couldn't guess at a percentage, but that's pretty much all I do. So 100 percent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I, enough to keep you busy. <laughs> enough to keep me busy. I, it's, I don't really pay attention to the bread and butter projects anymore. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Alan Angle, thank you for uh, hopping on. Uh, you want to uh, give yourself give a brief introduction? Hi. Uh, BDC FM Integration Manager with JLL. Um, act as a liaison between our owner clients and the AEC teams. Um, push data directly from the design and construction project into not WMS or CMMS. Do you use Dorofus? <laughs> Rock and I actually talked at RTC and we haven't caught back up together uh, for some opportunities. My problem is I don't have, I don't have contractors using Dorofus. Uh, I have a contract, if I have a contractor using Dorofus, I'll use Dorofus. And we started talking because I potentially have a client in Canada um, that they may have some people using Dorofus, and so we may work with them from there. But I mean, I know Dorofus very well. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, okay, we've also got some phone callers in. Uh, who's uh, 213? Uh, that's me. Oh, Jim, or okay, or whoever. Okay, 786. Or is anybody uh, only on the phone, <laughs> I guess? Okay, maybe everybody. All right, that's fine. Uh, did anyone that did not get to introduce themselves before I uh, take over uh, the show? <laughs> All right. I saw Carol on the phone. Did she introduce herself? I mean, have Yeah, just... she came on after you were done. I know. Okay. I, I think, I think next time we're going to have to uh, get Carol to present because she's got so much knowledge in there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so and actually you know what um alan while we have you why don't you talk about the uh the feedback um link here that i have oh do you have the link yeah so yeah i just, I just brought it up we've got a i created a smart sheet uh that basically that web uh that web comes up uh when you click on it uh, just fill that in each week Give us some feedback on what you think, if we're heading the right direction, what we need to do, whether we need to make them shorter, you didn't learn anything, whatever. Um, anyway, by you filling that out, we compile a list and it's a running list and smart sheet for us to just to get the feedback about the calls and see what's going on. Um, use it for suggestions if you want as well, as far as um, the PDF coalition even. I mean, it just doesn't have to be just about the call, but I set it up for the call because you all are taking time to sit in with us each week um, and we want to make sure that it's it's useful and resourceful to you um, and if there's something we can do better to make it more resourceful um, we'll try to do that awesome thanks alan um, and uh with that i am going to just go through uh so for the bluebeam lending conference there was a a lot of discussion around uh, the use of PDF files. And it, for those of you who are not aware, uh, the UK is uh, really going through a big transition when it comes to uh, BIM standards and uh, especially around this idea of a common data environment, which is really very much in line with a lot of what we're talking about in our initiative three of the uh, sort of data dictionary across projects. So um, I wanted to just take this time to share this presentation that I put together for the Bluebeam conference uh, go through it and then, you know, any discussion or ideas that come out of that and uh, we'll just make sure we wrap up at the end of the hour. Um, you know, starting with them, just I always go back to my favorite uh, original uh, BIM definition from 2007 that just reminds everyone that it's really more, mostly about being shared, uh, shared knowledge resource and that it's, you know, a reliable basis for decisions um, and that it does cross the entire life cycle from uh, earliest conception to demolition. 
And um, for those of you who don't know me, you know, my background was uh, implementing BIM and different innovation efforts across DPR construction for about 10 years and started on two different integrated project delivery contracts uh, with Sutter Health, uh, really a sort of a petri dish of uh, trying out new innovations in ways where we're using uh, Blooming Studio for uh, online collaboration where, you know, nobody would have thought that that was comfortable um, so we're like the, the early uh, Uber days, you know, it was still weird to, to ride with someone next to you. Um, but, uh, you know, trying to uh, start following off from that, you know, learning a lot about, you know, the role of PDFs and, and really the role of efficiencies uh, from, you know, MEP drawings that, you know, have all this internal metadata of their uh, school sheets and the uh, parts lists and how that goes to their fab shop and how they're really owning, you know, supply chain optimization uh, and, and really gaining that trust that what goes into the field uh, is, is what was in the model. And, um, you know, we, t we talk a lot about location accuracy, and, and one of the things that this has, you know, little to do with PDF, has, has a lot to do with data, is just the trust that you can take uh, individual points from the field, uh, from the model out into the field using robotic total station and the efficiencies that come from that. Um, and really that, that's what uh, enabled on a lot of these early projects uh, the more advanced workflows of using Revit for detailed uh, drywall framing coordination and, and uh, knowing exactly where uh, those dimensions need to go, not because it was some engineer, but because it was the actual framer that was doing that in the field, deciding where those dimensions should go, uh, and really is only possible because they trust that where that duct is in the model is where that duct is going to be in the field. And so then they can produce their you know, data-rich uh, PDS, which... Uh, you know, back then they were, it was easier just to print on 11 by 17. And, you know, frankly, if it's only one sheet, I'm fine with that. But a lot of them are moving more towards the, the tablets, the iPads, the Androids. Um, and it really allowed them to disrupt the process and start framing out a lot of these openings prior to even ducts or pipes showing up because they knew where it was going to be. Um, and, and if there's a conflict, you just look at the model and the model would really, uh, you know, be the, that single source of truth that was so important. Um, and really that alignment between 2D and 3D that we're trying to get with PDF Coalition. Um, so you can see just the, the great success metrics from, you know, a reduction in rework and increase in productivity from this type of a of co collaborative approach um, to, you know, MEP coordination and getting out in the field. Um, but a lot of what we talk about is that, you know, just because they did BIM didn't make it successful. It was really just that tool and that it was only as good as the skill sets of the, uh, you know, um, McClanahan Plumbing and South Flynn Mechanical and these guys that knew how to do this already um, and were good at supply chain on their own. But then with that IPD project, they could really bring the, the people around to a more effective process. Um, but, you know, that's not always the case. And so, um, you know, I was explaining, you know, out to the UK sort of the, the different uh, standard contract models that <laughs> in the U.S. between either the traditional design bid build uh, more of a design build contract or the uh, integrated project delivery um, and seeing that, you know, there's a ton of advantages to design build, but at the end of the day, it's still two contracts and it's still um, sort of two different relationships and, and a lot of uh, jockeying for uh, price and, and overselling and under delivering where, you know, IPD really incentivizes everybody to bring up the risks and the opportunities together and, uh, and drive more innovation. So, um, one example of this, and, and this is really where I got interested in and in introduced to the PDF Coalition, was by understanding what the 3D to 2D process was in a more traditional uh, format, and, and even for some scopes on our IPD projects, that a designer's Revit model is what creates the you know, uh, 2D PDF uh, drawings that may or may not still be digital or scanned back in. And that's typically what goes out to the you know, structural steel detailer or whoever's uh, using that to create their 3D model. Then they'll create their 2D drawings off of that, typically uh, review those 2D shop drawings, conform design intent. If not, we have to go back and forth. And that's what the contractor uses to build off of. And you know, where, what we keep talking about is this discrepancy between a 3D design model and a 3D fabrication model where you know, we've done very detailed uh, plumbing and riser coordination that all of a sudden this one beam being in the wrong direction uh, caused a $30,000, $100,000 clash, depending on how bad it is. Um, and these are things that could have been prevented had we seen them earlier. Um, 
and then even trying to do overlays when you've got a completely flipped floor plan uh, between what, what the design uh, 2D is coming out with and what the shop drawings are coming out with. So, you know, very challenging to do those comparisons between the two. Um, and one thing that we had really learned that, I don't know if you guys have experienced this uh, in the BIM world, but just the timing of when you bring certain, uh, the, you know, the fabrication level in for coordination, where we had certain areas where we thought we didn't have any clashes and we were fine, only to realize that with more detail comes more clashes. So important to look out for that. Um, but as, as we were talking about the UK and sort of how, they, how they're different from where the US is, um, you know, t today in 2016, we're, we're talking so much more about data and this common data environment. And, uh, you know, when, we, when I was doing them on these IPD projects, it was much more this idea that everything can be in the model and that it should be BIM centric. But I think that that idea should be going away. Um, and that, that is really, you know, a lot of my passion within the CP coalition is to define that, you know, it's really just about everybody should get what they want, but it should be coming from a single source of truth. And so even looking at an IFC, which is very big in Europe and, and UK versus a 3D PDF, which Alan's certainly a fan of, and, and uh, you know, we see a lot, it seems to be a lot easier to uh, gain traction here in the US, that they really both have 3D navigation, and they both got the same, you know, metadata and information within them uh, that's nav navigatable, um, they're both open source. They have the, you know, the international standards organization that, you know, even as the Brit these British standards start to move towards an international standards organization, ISO, um, we're going to see a lot of that coming to the U S and, uh, we might as well be, you know, ahead of that now with the CP coalition. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to file size, you know, I think that's always been a really great benefit of the 3d PDF is that it was small enough to email, whereas the equivalent of an IFC was significantly larger file type file size. Sorry. Um, and then, you know, interesting enough in, in the U S I think you'd be much more likely to find someone with, you know, Bluebeam or Adobe already loaded on their computer, much less likely to see someone with Celebri or Tecla BIM site. You know, I think Celebri does have more use in Europe, but, um, even still today, I think the vast majority still would have, uh, an Adobe or a Bluebeam. So, uh, as, and for those who've seen this present, uh, this slide from, past presentations, you know, we, we talk about this wanting to be in this future state of integrated data and dashboards and BIM and, um, you know, we, we all think that it's closer than it is and that, you know, it is uh, pretty far out and that most of this current state of paper-based workflows and, you know, Excel spreadsheets where we've got bad data and just not, uh, not being integrated in the way that we communicate is really holding us back and that, you know, but we feel as part of the CB coalition that that 2D integrated data rich PDF is a great middle ground, a great way to bridge that gap from current state to future state um, where, you know, it still feels like paper, it still looks like paper. Um, they can take their picture and attach it right there. And it's bringing in all of their, you know, contact information and location and time and schedule. And, you know, what, what's so great about that is we get all that information back. Um, because they trust and because they want to use this information, they're giving us all their data. You know, we can see that on our side on the desktop and then eventually that's what goes into the database that is going to populate all this great stuff that when we sell the owners on is, you know, what BIM and integrated data is all about. <clears throat> so, um, you know, to me, we're all about how do we just get pragmatic standards, pragmatic ways of, you know, moving from design and construction. And, and you know, I love uh, Brock's example where, you could go even further up into Revit and do a lot of these in-model reviews. You know, the, the most efficient way that we're able to do it on this project, and this is still probably fairly advanced for most projects, to go from a 3D model to, uh, and having a coordination sort of go-to meeting there to creating 2D shop drawings that go straight into a Bluebeam studio session for collaboration review and stamping to directly go out for fabrication and not allow any of those revise and resubmits because we just solved the problems in, in the uh, uh, studio session and see the back and forth and the answer saying, okay, yeah, as long as you fix that, uh, go for it and stamp that and release that for fabrication. You know, that's how we were able to save the time and the efforts to really make up schedule on uh, the hospital project we were on. <clears throat> but, you know, my, my vision for, uh, for those folks out there in, uh, in the UK was, you know, if you're going to have this common data environment, uh, the CDE in the center there, that it's not just going to be BIM at the center, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, drawing centric workflows that, you know, are, are blue beam or they're going to be, you know, other PDF viewers like field lens and Procore. And, you know, as long as they're integrating and, and sort of following those same data standards, we can all share between. 
And so, um, you know, with that, I think that was the, uh, the last part. And, you know, again, had a bunch of folks uh, trying to, you know, join PDF Coalition after that, sharing that, you know, this is really what, what we're all about and uh, had a really good discussion. So um, with that, I will uh, see if there were any questions from any folks um, based on what I just shared. And yes, I will be able to send the slideshow. I actually think I'm going to put it on SlideShare uh, on LinkedIn and I'll share it through the, um, the LinkedIn group with everyone. But yes, I will do that. Awesome. Um, if there are no other questions, um, I'm sure everybody is plenty busy and uh, happy to uh, wrap up. Um, I will, if, uh, if nothing else, yeah, these, again, these do get recorded and uh, we'll be putting them up on the YouTube channel. So uh, if anyone wants to, to share this, I'll probably end up splitting the first half and the second half um, so that uh, those can, can uh, share if they just want the second half presentation or uh, some of the discussions from the earlier half. So. Uh, if nobody else has anything, we will uh, close out the meeting and thank you guys so much. We uh, hope to talk to you next week. Thanks, Nathan. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nathan. Thank thanks, you. Bye. 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 Bye.